Yeah, we'll get started a little bit, uh, a little bit late, but as usual. Thing. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's always <laughs> wonderful to have a, uh, a full house. And uh, I know the uh, subject of anything related to the Holocaust uh, is of important of interest to so many people. My name is uh, Ron Weisberg, I'm the director of the Crystal County, Crystal County, Crystal Community College Holocaust Center, among other things. And um, we, uh, just very briefly, the Holocaust Center, which has just really got started uh, last year, we're um, sort of dedicated to doing programming around uh, not only the, the Jewish Holocaust, uh, but also uh, gen other genocides. Uh, we've been focusing, uh, and there's lots of lessons to be learned from what we call the Jewish Holocaust, but we also want to deal with others as we go, uh, you know, next year and following. We're actually planning uh, next spring on a conference on uh, the Cambodian genocide, which is another sad story. Uh, but it's important to know about the Holocaust itself, because as some of you know, there's sadly people who are still denying uh, anti-Semitism, again, is out there, uh, seems to be hard to squelch. So there's many lessons to be learned uh, from even the Holocaust itself. And as some of you may know, this is the 17th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, as well as other camps, uh, as the Allied armies from Soviet Union and the United States and Britain converged and eventually liberated uh, those few, basically, who were left. Um, so um, in commemoration of uh, the liberation, we are having this spring, the Holocaust Center is sponsoring two programs. One is the one today, um, and the other will be April 9th. I hope many of you can come. Uh, it's a Thursday at 4 o'clock, where we have a survivor of all switch. Today we're talking about a survivor who escaped. This is Esther Bauer, a 90-year-old woman, will be here talking about her experiences. So uh, we're doing these two programs related to um, for in, in commemoration of, of that event. Um, we also will be planning some workshops uh, for teachers, um, either late summer and in the fall. We have other programs. So you'll be hearing about us, but um, it's, as I say, wonderful to see so many people come here. Um, Today, program deals with a, a gentleman which you'll hear about. And you'll get to see. Sadly, he's deceased, but uh, his wife, Robin, is here. Uh, she and I had a wonderful dinner, and she's a great friend. <laughs> she's also, uh, I don't know if that cut, she's also grew up in Fall River. So she's a local, and her mother, Renee Lipson, Ran, those of you from Fall River may know, uh, ran Bertha's Bakery for many years. And uh, Renee's a wonderful person that uh, introduced me to this whole subject. And um, we'll be doing some things with her. Uh, in fact, we're, we're going to create an a advisory committee for the center. Any of you interested, you can see me about that. Um, so anyway, uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce Robin Verba, who uh, was married over 30 years, right, to uh, Rudolph Verba. Uh, incredible man with a great deal of courage who uh, risked his life. Very few people escaped from Auschwitz, and you'll, you'll see that. And you'll get to see him coming back because in the video he goes back. I don't know how you can do that. And takes people kind of shows him. And then you see how he escaped. <coughs> um, this is an old, uh, I'm told it's very grainy. It's from the Canadian Broadcasting, so you have to bear with us. I think hopefully the audio is fine. But. Um, so it may be a little bit difficult to see some, but I think it makes its points out. And then Robin will be available for uh, to talk a little bit about maybe the background of the film, but then to answer questions. And she has a lot to say, even though she's very modest about it. So uh, I just want to introduce Robin as this little introduction. Okay, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dr. Weisberger um, in, um, asked me to introduce this film, which actually retraces Rudy's escape from Auschwitz in 1944, together with his friend, Freddie Wetzler. And um, Rudy and I were married in, um, in Boston in 1975. And unfortunately, he passed away in, um, 
in 2006. It would be really nice if he were here to be doing this, but anyway, that's how it goes. Um, as you watch the film, I think it's really important to realize that Rudy was only a 17-year-old teenager when he escaped from Auschwitz. And, yep. and, and 19, when, when, um, 19 when he escaped and 17 when he was incarcerated. Um, and um, he told me many times that when he finally understood that the Germans' goal was to murder him, that he kept saying to himself, I gotta get out of here. Um, and that was his focus. Um, so his escape became a total focus and total goal. He had tried it a few times and then finally succeeded. Um, you know, after, um, after he and his friend escaped, they returned to their home of Slovakia and they got in touch with the Jewish agency there. And uh, the, um, they sort of dictated their report of how the camp was designed, um, what the murdering system was, where the different transports were, and it's the only contemporary report that exists um, depicting the actual, um, uh, the actual runnings of the camp. And they did diagrams. It's in the back of one of the books that he published. It's, it's available. I think you can see it on Wikipedia as well. Um, anyway, as a person, Rudy was amazing. He was gorgeous. He was fun. He was funny. <laughs> um, and he was totally charismatic. Um, so, you know, I think you'll see part of that when you see him in the film. And, um, and you know, and I'll be willing to, to um, I'm looking forward to any of your questions um, after the film. Um, and I would like to thank the audience for coming and Dr. Weisberger and BCC for um, organizing this event. Thank you. I also want to mention uh, that uh, we, Dr. Timber, Howard Timber, is out there somewhere. He and I co teach a course on the Holocaust, and many of our students are here. And, uh, it's been a wonderful course. Uh, it's our 12th year teaching it, and in some ways, the center came out of that. But uh, so we have those students who have taken a whole semester. Uh, it's not always an easy course, but uh, it's a great course. So, uh, you know, the students are out there. Uh, all right, we're going to. Uh, so, uh, not easy thing to uh, watch, but um, Robin is uh, available uh, to um, maybe give a, I don't, just a little background on it, because you were with him, right, at, at yeah. this was done, but, yeah. and then mainly to answer questions and uh, answers. Um, I want to say before I forget that, you know, the Holocaust Center, as I said, just started, is a funded uh, in part by the Jewish Federation of New Bedford, which has been very generous helping us, uh, and uh, individual contributions from folks in the community and at the college. So we're continuing, and hopefully we'll be continuing our programming, but this is a great program, and um, Robin, you want to come? Sure. So do you want me to say something about? Yeah. I mean, I can tell you, uh, Rudy had a humongous sense of humor. I don't know if you, if you picked that up in the, in the documentary. And we were in Auschwitz. We had the uh, Canadian Broadcasting Film um, Group, the producers, and they hired local Polish uh, crew for filming the film. They were great, but we were traveling with them in this old Volkswagen um, bus that was always breaking down. And we were inside the camp, and I guess um, we were in there for the whole day, and they were doing their filming. And, and then uh, it was about 5.30 and we tried to get out of it and the gate had been locked. So everybody, I mean, it was all muddy and <laughs> so everybody started to really fret, how are we gonna get out of here? And Rudy said, never mind, I know another way out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, he, he always put some humor into everything. And um, <laughs> anyway, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Yes? Robin, the, the book that uh, your husband authored, was that ever published publicly? Oh yeah, it was many publications. What, what's the title of it? Um, it was called I Cannot Forgive, and then it was called I Escaped from Auschwitz, and then it was called 44070, The Conspiracy of the 20th Century. It was published in, in French, Dutch, um, Hebrew, Czech, um, yeah, but it was written in English. Yeah, I think that that's it. Yeah. 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 Y
Um, Where could they, if they wanted to get, purchase it? Um, I'm, I have the rights to it, and I have to organize that. <laughs> um, I think you can go online and get copies of it, though. How about the library? Oh, you can get the book. You read the book, Jackie. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Paperback. Right. <laughs> and uh, Robin has donated four copies for our library here. Oh, so we'll have one in the one or two in the library. We have one in our the center, which we're evolving. It'll be one seventeen. So thank you so much. Oh. Anybody else? Yes. I, I was just thinking that I, I love the film. I thought it was a great film, and it wasn't you know too long or anything like that. But I think that I believe that it could be restored. The the um, that would be great. I think, yeah. You know, I, I'm not an expert on it, but I believe they could restore <coughs> that, uh, so there would be you know clear again. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. What did What did your husband do immediately after his escape? Say, uh, he moved. He was from Slovakia, which was. They were, um, Czechoslovakia was one country, then it turned into two countries during the Second World War, and then it went back into one country. So when he, the war ended, he went um, to school, he, he, he had dropped out of high school, and so he, um, he quickly um, uh, got his high school degree, and then he went to Prague, and he studied, uh, he studied uh, engineering and neurochemistry, and he had a couple of degrees, one in engineering and one doctor, one PhD, in, in uh, neurochemistry. And then he started to publish papers. He was publishing in Nature from Czechoslovakia. Yes? Did you have any siblings? And what happened to his parents? Um, well, his, his father died when he was six, but his mother was still alive, and she ended up, um, he saved her life, and he saved his half-sister's life, and his nephew and um, half-brother-in-law. Brother -in um, he told them what was happening and they got false papers and they were able to survive. But his mother at the end of the war got, um, uh, got caught up in the deportation and she ended up in Theresienstadt. Uh, he said she needed to lose some weight, she came out looking really good. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, so he didn't, yeah, I don't think he, he didn't lose any immediate family. Yes? Was he ever acknowledged for providing the first report? Oh, oh yeah. Um, the, the, um, he was awarded a Righteousness Award um, from the uh, Holocaust Center in Detroit, uh, just as the Berlin Wall fell, which was kind of significant, um, together with a man by the name of Mantello. And Mantello was a really interesting person. He was sort of a businessman. He's, I don't think he's alive anymore, but he got the honorary, doc, the honorary um, Righteousness Award as well. And uh, he um, was one of the people that, um, that brought Rudy's report to the, um, to the Vatican. And after the war, the, the Germans had collected all the silver from the, uh, from the um, temples and, and uh, they were gonna burn, they were gonna melt it down and sell it as silver. And I guess he found that out, and he saved all of it, and he made a lot of um, connections in the Jewish community all over the world. So a lot of those, um, those things that you see in some of the temples and synagogues are actually from him saving them from, from, melt, from a meltdown. Anybody else? How did you meet? Oh, we were in a party in Boston. <laughs> came in the room and I said, oh my god, that guy's adorable. <laughs> yes? How did he handle his bad moments of the memories? And were there well, he did, yeah, I mean, he did have nightmares. And um, I, I think he was different from a lot of the survivors. I was telling the man from the Herald News that earlier today. When he went into Auschwitz, first of all, he had no children. And he... He looked at it as a soldier, so he took the whole experience as if he was a soldier. And he looked at what those people were doing and he said, what the, who the hell do they think they are? And he was so angry and, his, and he, he channeled that anger into, um, into the escape, I'm sure of it. Because I've seen how he channeled anger against the neo-Nazis and how he, he fought them as well, verbally. So he had, 
and then when he, um, when he escaped, he joined the partisans, and he was one of the fiercest fighters in the partisans, so that probably released a lot of the frustration that, that most um, survivors experience. That's my opinion, anyway. Yes? How long was he actually on the run for um, I th what they're doing, they're retracing the escape, this, um, a retracing the escape in August this year to sort of commemorate the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. And I think they're planning for 10 days. I think it was something like that. I forgot. Yes? Robin, I'm, I'm just curious for the audience here. Uh, like yourself, I, I, I was able to go to uh, Auschwitz to Dachau many times at the, the Anne Frank House, I would sit in front of these places and just pray, you know, for hours about man's inhumanity to man. Uh, I'm just curious from this audience here how many people have had the, the opportunity to go to Europe to visit any of these places. Could you ask for a show of hands or anything for Auschwitz or mm -hmm. Dachau or quite an experience? So Rudy was. Um, was in the camp. Um, he went on an, um, an expedition from a student expedition from Czechoslovakia, and it was an educational expedition. And he didn't tell anybody who he was or what his history was. And he was telling us that uh, he went to the camp in 1948. And so somebody said, "Well, how did you feel going back then?" And he went like this. He went like this. Much better than the first time. <laughs> Yes? I'm curious as to the reaction of the Vatican when they received this information. Um, I'm not really a historian. Um, there are historical articles that are published um, about um, who received the report and how it was transported. There's a, um, there's a professor by the name of John Conway, and I think if you Google him, you can probably find out some of, the, um, some of that information. Anyone else? He wrote an introduction to, uh, or part of the appendix. Yes, the yes, comment. yes. Yes? So how did he get from so Slovakia to Boston and to... Oh Boston? my god, that's a very long story. <laughs> so um, he defected in 58, and he went to Israel for two years. He didn't like it there, so then he went to London. Um, and um, in London, he ran out of money, so he needed to get a better job. So he had a friend in New York. He, he was um, blackballed from coming to the U.S. <laughs> um, and so he, um, and he was blackballed because of being in Israel. There was some kind of a, an agreement that, anyway, that's, that's another story. So he, uh, his friend in, um, in New York, got him a connection in Vancouver, and that's how he ended up in Vancouver. And then he went on a sabbatical to Boston, that's where I met him. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you want to the, uh... Well, okay. Just... You can mention it. All right. Anyway, um, thank you all for coming. This is a, I think Raul will be here, anybody wants to talk to her uh, on the Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming. Uh, it's a very complicated Thank story. Thank you. Um, especially in relationship to, um, as so you so heard at the end, no one asked that question. Oh, that's about really about funny. Oh, it's so here. funny. <laughs> Leadership and all of that and how that relates. So that's a whole other, and you can read about that. In, um, we're actually um, going to have a gentleman named, um, what's his last name? It's Ronald. Mark, who wrote a book called oh, that really really amazing. Story to the Doom. He's actually a but it's nice story that we left a few documentaries. Right? And he wrote about the whole, this is, this is the whole story beautiful. about the Hungarian Jews. Um, uh, oh, what happened to them and why they weren't born. And the negotiations with Eichmann with the leadership um, of the uh, Jewish community there. So we're going to have a program in the fall which will be somewhat of a follow up. To, uh, what we heard today. Um, but uh, it's an uh, amazing uh, story, both uh, depressing and also enlightening at the same time, as, as so much of this is. But that's kind of emissary to the dudes. They do. You can get on Amazon if you're interested. Mr. Um, 
I would hope that before we all leave here, we commit ourselves to being kind and gentle and loving to all of the persons who come within our sphere of influence. I think that's the fundamental message that we should leave with today. Then we can effect positive, loving change on the planet. Well, thank you. Never again, and sadly, as we know, there's been other genocides. But education, while not entirely the, you know, the uh, silver bullet, does make a difference. And so the more people know, the uh, hope is that we'll avoid these types of things again. But, uh, that's a good thing to uh, be in mind. Thank you again. Uh,